Today we're going to be learning about how to find the volume and surface area of complex prisms. I just want to quickly remind you about what we learned in the last lesson about prisms. Remember, prisms are 3D objects that have the same face on both ends of the object. So here are a couple of a couple of prisms that we learned about in the last lesson. We've got the rectangular prism or the cuboid. We've got the cube and we've got the triangular prism. Now in today's lesson, we're going to be going and we're going to be learning about some different kinds of prisms where we combine these prisms and we use the concept of what a prism is. Okay, then we also learned about the surface area in the last lesson. We said that the surface area is the sum of the area of all the faces around that prism and the volume of the prism is the amount of space that the prism takes up and it's worked out by saying the volume of the area the volume is equal to the area of the base multiplied by the height and uh, just quickly reminding you so the volume of a rectangular prism or a cuboid is worked out by saying length times breadth times height because the area of the base is length times breadth because it's a rectangle the cube we work out by saying uh, side cubed because it's side squared times another side because this, the height is the same as the sides and then the triangular prism is half base times perpendicular height for the area of the triangle and then multiplied by the height of the prism to get the volume. Okay, so that's how we work out the volume of the prisms. Okay, so now we're going to go on to an example where we're going to be working with slightly different ways of asking questions and also uh, different kinds of prisms. The first one we're going to do is this one over here. This is a very different kind of question. So here you've been told Jason is planning to paint the walls and ceiling of his bedroom. Now be careful, they've told you that you, he's painting the walls and ceiling, he is not painting the floor. Okay, so you need to be aware of that. So you need to take into account all the walls and the ceiling of the bedroom. And here you've got a diagram of the bedroom. You can also see in the bedroom you've got a door over here and you've got a window. So when we work out how much he's going to be painting, we are not going to include the floor and we're also going to not include the door and the window because he's not going to paint those. Okay, so first let's have a look at the first question. It says, calculate the total area that he needs to paint using the diagram of his room, which is this diagram over here. All measurements are in centimeters. Okay, so we're going to be working out the area of all the walls and the area of the ceiling, which are all rectangles. And then we also have to remove the area of the door and we have to remove the area of the window because he's not going to paint those. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how we would do this. So here I've got my diagram of the room that he's painting. Okay, so first to work out this is we're working out the surface area because we're working out the area of all the walls and everything that he has to paint. So it's going to be surface area. But it's going to be a little bit different to the surface area questions we've done so far because we're not doing the surface area of all the surfaces. And also, this isn't external surface area, it's internal surface area, but it still works the same. It still is the area of all the rectangles that we, that we need to include. Okay, so if we work out, first the ceiling, okay? Now remember, we're not doing the floor, so we're just going to do one of these rectangles. Now, even though it looks like it's not a rectangle, it's just because it's flat, okay? So this is a rectangle over here. We're working out the area of this rectangle. We've been told this measurement is 290, and we were told all the measurements are in centimeters. So this is 290 centimeters. And this measurement isn't over there, and it's not over there, but it is over here. So that's 305. So this rectangle is 290 by 305 centimeters, okay? So that is the first one I'm going to do. So that's going to be for, for the uh, ceiling, length times breadth of the ceiling. Okay, which I'm going to have 290 times 305. Plus, we also need to add in the area of this wall and this wall. Now, both of these walls are the same as each other because they're opposite each other in this rectangular prism. So they're identical. So I can just work it out once and multiply by two. So I have two times the area of a rectangle for the wall. And I'll call that wall A, okay? Plus, same thing for the back wall over there and the front wall over here. So first of all, this wall is the height is 240, okay, and that is 305. So it's 240 by 305. So that's plus 2 times 305 
times 240. Okay, plus over here, I'm going to have the back wall over there and the front wall over here. That is 290 by 240. So that is two times length times breadth for wall B. And so that's 290 times 240. Okay, so that will give us the area of all the walls and the ceiling. Okay, so if we work that out first, we've got 290 times 305 plus 2 times 305 times 240 plus 2 times 290 times 240. And that gives us 374,050. And that is centimeters squared. So that is the total that he would have to paint if there were no doors or windows. But he, there are doors. There is a door and there is a window. So what we're going to do now is we're going to subtract I'm going to work out the surface area of what he needs to paint. Okay, so I'm going to take that 374,050 and I'm going to subtract the area of a door and the area of the window. So I'm going to say the area of a door is length times breadth for the door and I'm also going to subtract the area of the window. So that's length times breadth for the window. Okay, so that's going to be 3,740 or 374,050 minus for my door I've got 210 by 90 and minus for the window I've got 100 by 150. Okay so now I can go and work that out. So I'm going to say over here 3, 374,050 minus 210 times 90 and also minus the window which is 100 by 150 and that gives us, that gives us 340,150 centimeters squared. So that is the total area that he needs to paint. Now this could have been done slightly differently. You could have taken all of this and done it on the end of that calculation if you wanted to or you can work it out separately and you can say what is the area of the door and the window that he's not going to paint and then subtract it after you've worked it out from the 374,050. So there are a couple of ways of doing it. This is just one way. I, I actually did it this way just so I didn't have space on the page to continue writing. Okay, right. Now that is question A. We've worked out the total area that he would need to paint. Remember we're not including the floor, we're just doing the ceiling which was this and the two walls and we are not painting the window and the door. Okay, so now let's go to the next part of the question. Okay, because remember he's having to paint this. So now we need to work out, it says that he needs to buy paint. So we need to work out how much paint he's going to buy. The first thing we need to do to work that out is look at how much they tell us he's going to be using per square centimeter. They say if he will use 0 0.02 milliliters of paint per square centimeter, calculate how much paint he will need to buy. Okay, express your answer in liters. So first, let's go and work out how much paint he will use. Okay, so if we have got our area, which is 3, 340,150, we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by the amount of paint he uses for every square centimeter. These are square centimeters. Okay, so for each one of these, he is going to use 0 0.02 milliliters of paint. So to work out the total amount of paint he's going to use, I'm going to take the area and multiply it by the amount of paint he uses per square centimeter. So to take that and multiply by 0 0.02, which gives us 6,803. Now this is milliliters, so that means that this is milliliters over there. So that's how much he uses, um, how much paint he uses in milliliters. But they asked us to give the answer in liters. So how do we convert from milliliters 
to liters. To convert from milliliters to liters, you're going to divide by 1,000. So I'm going to divide that by 1,000, and that gives me 6.803, and they told us to round it off to two decimal places, so that's going to be 6.80, or just 6.8 liters. So that's how much paint he needs to paint the room, okay? Now, let's have a look at the next question. So that was question B. The next question, question C, over here, says that if the paint is sold in two liter tins, calculate how many tins he will need to buy. Okay, so now we need to work out how many tins he's going to have to buy so that he will have enough paint to paint his room. So if he's going to need at least 6.8 liters, let's take 6.8 and divide that by two because he's, he can only buy it in in two liter tins, okay? So 6.8 divided by two is 3.4. Okay, so now we know that he needs 3.4 tins, but you can't buy 3.4 tins from the shop. He can't only buy three tins because then he won't have enough paint. So we have to round this up. So therefore he's going to need four tins of paint. Okay, we have to round it up because three tins isn't going to be enough. Right, and then the last question in this example is, if the paint costs 259 Rand per tin, how much will the paint cost him? Okay, so let's go and have a, a look at how we would work that out. So now we know how many tins he has to buy. He has to buy four tins. So we're going to multiply the cost per tin by the number of tins he has to buy. So it's going to be four times, the cost per tin is 259 Rand. So four times 259 is 1,036 Rand. So that's how much it's going to cost him to buy all the paint that he needs to be able to paint his bedroom. Right, so that's one kind of example that you can get where you have it to work out surface area, work out how much paint it would take to cover that surface area and so on. Right, here's another example. Calculate the capacity of the container, the volume of the liquid in the container, and how much empty space is left in the container. We need to round off to two decimal places. Now, this one over here is what we call a cylinder. Now, a cylinder isn't technically a prism because it has round edges, okay, and a prism is supposed to have straight edges, but the concept of how we work with a prism is the same for a cylinder. That to work out the volume, it's the area of the base times the height. And in a cylinder, the base is a circle. Okay, so it's going to be exactly the same concept as what we were doing for our prisms, that we're going to work out the area of the base and multiply it by the height to find the volume, or in this case, we're going to be finding the capacity of the, uh, in this case, it's a cylinder. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would do this. So first of all, over here. Here I've got my cylinder. This is got it has got liquid in it up to eight centimeters. The cylinder is 12 centimeters high and it is 10 centimeters wide like this. That's the diameter of the circle. Okay, so if we look at what our base shape would be for the circle or for the cylinder, you can see that the base is going to be a circle. It's got a diameter of 10 centimeters. And that means that the radius is going to be 5 centimeters. Okay, so our base shape is going to be the circle over here. Right, so what we're going to do to work out the capacity, let's actually go to a new page over here, so we have space. To work out the capacity, first we have to work out the volume, because remember, capacity and volume are related. So I have to work out the volume to work, in order to work out the capacity of this container. So the volume is equal to the area of the base multiplied by the height. Now the area of the base, it's a circle, so let's first work out the area of the base. It's pi r squared, okay, because it's the base is a circle. So that's going to be pi times 5, because we said the radius of the circle is 5, squared. Okay, and that's going to be 25 pi. Now, I'm not going to round that off, 
because I need to use it again. I'm not at the end of my question. So I'm just going to keep it as 25 pi or you can keep it as pi times 5 squared as well. Then we're going to go and we're going to use that to work out our volume of the whole container. That's the total volume. So that's going to be the area of the base multiplied by the height. Okay, so the area of the base is 25 pi multiplied by the height. Now the height, because I'm working out the capacity, it's the total, it's, we're going to be working with the total volume of the whole container. So that's going to be using the height of the whole container, which is 12 centimeters. Okay, and that gives us 25 pi times 12, which is 942.48. Centimeters cubed. Okay, so now we were asked to work out the capacity. So the capacity centimeters cubed is the same as milliliters, so it's going to be the same 942.48, but it's in milliliters. So the capacity of this container is 942.48 milliliters. Right, now let's go and have a look at the next part of the question. The next thing we were asked to do is to work out the volume of the liquid in the container. So over here, this is the liquid in the container. It only goes up to the 8 centimeter mark over here. So to work out the volume of the liquid in the container, I'm going to, it's got the same base, okay? It's in the container that has a base, a circular base with a diameter of 10 centimeters or a radius of 5 centimeters. It's got the same base. So the area of the base is going to be the same, but it's got a different height because it's the whole container isn't filled with liquid. It's only filled up to here. So I'm going to say for my volume of the liquid is going to be the area of the base times the height. Now the area of the base is the same, so still 25 pi. But the height is 8 centimeters. So it's times 8. So that's going to be 25 pi times 8. And that is 628.32. centimeters cubed. Now for that one, we're keeping it in centimeters cubed because they asked us to work out the volume of the liquid. So volume is in centimeters cubed. Right, then we want to work out, or we need to work out how much empty space is left in the container. Now the, now the empty space is just this part of the container. Okay, so to work out the empty space, I have two choices. I can either take the capacity and subtract what has already been filled to find out what's the empty space, or I can work out the volume of the empty space. Okay, so there are two ways of doing this. I can either take the total volume, which is 942, so this is the volume of the empty space. That's going to be the total minus the volume of the liquid. So that is 942.48 minus 628.32. So 942.48 minus 628.32. And that gives us 314.16. centimeters cubed. It is still volume, so it is still centimeters cubed. Okay, now the other way of doing it is to work out the volume of that part of the container in the same way that I did for working out the volume of the liquid. Okay, so the, the base is still the same shape. Okay, so I can say the volume of the empty part of the container is the area of the base multiplied by the height. So the base is still 25 pi multiplied, but now the height of the empty part is going to be 12 minus 8, which is 4 centimeters. Okay, so my height over here will be 4. So that's going to be 25 or pi, 25 pi times 4. And that gives us 314.16, which is exactly the same answer that we had over here. 
0.16 centimeters cubed. So there are two ways of working out that empty space. Okay, now we're going to go on to another example. Here we have got a completely different shape for our prism. Okay, now in this prism, we have got this shape as our base shape. You can see that on the other, on the back of it, it'll be the same shape. Okay, so the base, remember, is whatever is the same on the two ends. So on the two ends, the front and the back are identical to each other. They both have this H shape. Okay, we only have to work out the volume of this prism. We don't have to work out the surface area, just the volume. And we've been told that all the measurements are given to us in millimeters. Right, so for this one, there are a couple of ways of doing it. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you both ways that you can do it. So we've got the one option is to work out, just like we did with that the prism, the, the cylinder in the previous example, to say that the volume of a, of a prism is the area of the base times the height. So we can work out the area of the base and then multiply it by the height. Okay, so now just to, so you are aware, the height, remember, is the distance between the two ends of your prism. So the two ends of the prism are the H shapes over here. So this is our height over here. It's the distance between those. So that's our, our height. Okay. And that's going to be the height no matter which approach we use. So the one approach is to say that the base shape is this shape over here. So the base is this H shape like this. And that I can get by taking a rectangle and subtracting these two. So I can say this is A and this is B and this is B. So that's going to be A minus two Bs. Okay. So to work that out, I would say the area of the base is for A, it's the whole big rectangle. So it's that rectangle is length times breadth of A minus two times the length times the breadth of B. Now, if you look over here, the reason I'm saying both of these are B is because I've got 25 and 30 and here I've got 25 and 30. They're identical to each other. So these two are the same as each other. Okay. And the length and the breadth will both be 25 and 30. Well, the length and the breadth for both will be 25 and 30. So length times breadth of B. Okay, so that's the one way of doing it. I can work out the area of the H itself, okay, by saying the total area minus the two identical rectangles. So that's going to be the big rectangle. This whole big rectangle is 15 plus 25 plus 15, that's 55, times 80. So that's how we work out the area of that big rectangle. Then I'm going to subtract the two small rectangles, these two pieces over here. So it's minus two times, and the area of one of those is 25 by 30. Okay, so now we can go and work that out. So I've got 55 times 80, or minus two times 25 by 30. That gives us 2,900. Okay, so now I know that the area of the H is 2,900 centimeters squared. This is, no, millimeters squared. Okay, then to work out the volume, I'm going to say volume is the area of the base times the height. So that's going to be 2,900 times the height, which is the distance between the two H's. So that's this over here, which is 25. So 2,900 times 25 is 72,500. And that is millimeters cubed. So that's the one way of working it out. The other way of working it out is to take the shape and split it up into pieces, which are more like the regular shapes that we used to. So I can take this and I can divide that over there. And I can divide it over there. And I can say, well, these two are the same as each other. So I can work out the volume of this piece and multiply it by two because it's the same over there. And then work out the volume of this and then just add the, the, the volumes together. Okay. 
So I can say this is A, this is B, and then this will also be A because they're the same as each other. Okay, so the volume of A, so this is a different way of doing it. Volume of A is equal to, so this is just a rectangular, if you ignore that, this is just a rectangular prism. So I've got length times breadth times the height, which is over here, it's 80. Okay, so to work out that volume, length times breadth times 80. So 25 or length times breadth times height is 25 by 15 by 80. Okay, so that's going to be 25 times 15 times 80 is 30,000 millimeters cubed. Then the volume of B is over here, the middle piece. This is 25, and this distance over here is 80 minus 30 and minus that 30. So that's going to be 20. So this is 20, sorry, 20 over there. Okay, so that's going to be 25 by 20, and then this over here is the same as that, it's also 25. So it's going to be length times breadth times height. That's 25 by 20 by that 25 over there. Okay, so 25 times 20 times 25 is 12,500 millimeters cubed. Right, so now to work out the total volume, I can say that in this over here, I've got two A's, so it's two times the volume of A plus the volume of B. So that's going to be two times 30,000 plus 12,500. So two times 30,000 plus 12,500 is 72,500, which is the same answer we got over there millimeters cubed. So there are two different approaches. You can either work out the area of the base as a complex shape in the way we were doing, we were doing 2D shapes. Okay, so the area of the base is a complex shape and then multiply that by the height of the prism, which is the distance between the two ends of your prism. Or you can take the shape and you can split it up into more manageable sections and work out the volume of those sections and then add it together. So there are different ways of doing it. Okay, right, now I'm going to give you two more that you're going to do for yourself and then we're going to be done for today. So the first one you're going to do over here, you have got to work out only the volume of this prism over here. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So just like in the last one, there are two ways of doing this. You can either take this base shape and work out the area of the base. So I can say the base is this shape, like that. And I'm going to take these two pieces and add them up, okay? So you can say, I've got a triangle and a rectangle, so that's going to be the area of the base is the area of a triangle. plus the area of a rectangle. Okay, so that's the two pieces that make up the base. So then I've got over here for the triangle, A, you can see over here, if this is nine meters and this is six meters, then that means that this height for my triangle is nine minus six, which is three. Okay, so that's three meters. And then I know that this is four. So I need to work out my area using the three and the four as my base and my height. So that's half times three times four plus the length and the breadth of the rectangle. If the whole, this whole height is nine, then that means that this must be six. Okay, so the rectangle is six by four. Right, so then I can go and I can work out the area. So I've got 0.5 or half times three times four. That's for the triangle plus six times four for the rectangle. And that gives me 30. So the area of my base is 30 meters squared. Then I can work out the volume of the whole prism by saying the area of the base times the height. And that gives me 30 times the height, which is the distance between the two shapes like this. So there and there, the distance between them is the eight over here. So that's my height. And that gives me times eight is 240 meters cubed. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, just like we did in the previous example, is to split the prism up into two sections and work out the volume of each section separately and then add it together. So over here, the top section, if I work out this whole section over here, that is A. And then the bottom section is B, or that's what I'm calling them anyway. So I'm going to work out the volume of A and I'm going to work out the volume of B and then I'm going to add them. Right, so the volume of A, it's a triangular prism, so I'm going to have half base times the perpendicular height multiplied by the height of the prism. Okay, so that's going to be just like we had in the previous one, the height of the triangle is three, the base of the triangle is four, so it's half times four times three, or three times four, it doesn't matter, multiplied by the height, that's the distance between the two triangles, which is eight. Okay, so 0.5 times 4 times 3 times 8 is 48 meters cubed. Then for my rectangular prism, so the volume of B is length times breadth times height. So that's going to be not, or 6 and 4 and 8 as the length and the breadth and the height. So 6 times 4 times 8. And that gives us 192 meters cubed. And then the total volume, I'm just going to add those. So the, the total is the volume of A plus the volume of B. Now in this case, it's not like the first one where I had two A's and one B. Here, I just have one A and one B. I'm just going to add them. So I'm going to have 48 plus 192 and if I say 48 plus 192, that gives me 240, which is the same answer that I got over there. 240 meters cubed. So there are two ways of doing that one. And then the last example for today is this one over here. 
Here you have got a half circle, okay? And you've got a prism that's been made out of this half circle. You need to work out the volume of this. So I'm going to give you two minutes for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through this last example for today. So over here, we have got our half circle. Now, the first thing you had to do was recognize that this five centimeters is the diameter of your half circle. So if you look at the center over here, the distance from there to there, from the center to the outside is two and a half or 2.5 centimeters. That is your radius. So when we're working with our half circle, the radius is going to be 2.5 centimeters. Okay, so now let's go and work out the volume. Now on this one, I don't really have two ways of doing it. I kind of have to go with the area of the base times the height method. So let's have a look at the base. So our base shape is this half circle over here. You can see it's the same on this side as it is on that end over there. Okay, so our base is a half circle and it has got a radius of, as I said over here, 2.5 centimeters. And we're going to have to use that when we're working out our volume. So to work out the area of the base, remember the area of the base, if the base is a half circle, it's going to be the area of a half circle. So half of the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So that's half pi times the radius, which was 2.5 squared, okay? So now I can work that out. I've got half times 2.5 squared. I'm not going to multiply by pi at this point. I'm going to keep it in terms of pi. So I can say 3.125 pi, or I can keep it like that if I want and just put that into my next formula. Okay, so now that is the area of the base without rounding it off. Then the, now I'm going to work out the volume. The volume is the area of the base times the height. Okay, so the area of the base is 3.125 pi. And that was centimeters squared. Okay, so it's 3.125 pi multiplied by the height. Now the height is the distance between the two half circles so that is 10, so it's times 10. And now I can go and type that into my calculator and get a final answer. So 3.125 pi times 10, and that gives me 98.17. And that is centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's what you had to do to work out that question.
And that is how we find the volume and surface area of complex prisms. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.